to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. What is vision? A clear picture of the next level of your life. A clear picture of your destiny. This is very powerful. There are many well-meaning believers born again, filled with the Holy Spirit and they have ignored the power of vision to the detriment of their progress. Vision is powerful. A clear picture of the next level of your life. It is in this area that both science and religion agree that without vision there is no movement. Motion is a function of vision. There is no car that does, does not have a provision to look at. There is no plane. No matter how, how managed, they must give space because sight is what controls movement. The pilot must see. The driver must see. The captain must see. I don't know any creature that has his eyes backward. Every creature I know has the eyes forward because you only move in the direction of your eyes. Vision is powerful. Please listen carefully. The vision for my life. This ministry continues to make giant strides in the spirit because your pastor has a vision, very clear vision. Are we together now? Now, as powerful as vision is, it does not profit you just remaining as vision. You must break your vision into goals and break your vision into daily tasks. Until your vision becomes daily tasks, it will only remain a dream in the realm of the spirit. There are people who have done well in terms of writing a theme that seems to coordinate their lives, but were unable to break the visions into goals. What is a goal? A desired end, an expected end. A subset of that vision. And you break it into tasks. There is an energy, there is a power that vision gives. When you break your vision into tasks, it gives you focus. Vision gives you the legitimate ground to say no to many things. There are many things you will not be able to have the courage to say no to until you have vision. Vision gives you the legitimate ground to say no to many things. If you are not a man of vision, you are not a woman of vision, you will not have the courage to say no to so many things. And there are many things, 24 hours was given to you with respect to your vision. So time will never be enough to mix your vision alongside many distractions. You will have to cut away so many things to give you the time and to give you focus. Can I tell you this? The unit of destiny is time. Whatever you give your time to, you are giving part of your life to. And you must be sure that every minute and every second you commit to anything is worth that while. Everybody say vision. Show me a man who has nothing working in his life but vision. I show you a man who is already working his way to a dimension of kingdom influence, dimension of grace that no principality and power can stop. Vision is powerful. I do not know any leader who is not visionary. Even the devil is visionary. 
he has been clear about his assignment. Even Jesus testified about the dexterity of Satan's assignment. That anytime you see him, he is there to steal, to kill, to destroy. There's no record of him coming to advise. There's no record of him coming. Anytime the thief cometh not, that means he has no business coming except this singular vision. No wonder he seems to be succeeding. The law is so powerful. Because we are hoping God will find a way of just lifting us. Very, very spiritual but very wrong. Some of those superstitious thinkings in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, be delivered from it now. We have many sociological wise sayings. They look spiritual because they've been handed down by well-intentioned people. But these things, are they give access to the devil to blind our minds and our progress. One day it go better. You've heard that kind of saying. I know my God is too faithful to just leave me like that. You are right. But with respect to this truth, you are wrong. I introduce to you the God of systems. Hoping that your life will change just because it's alive. Let me tell you this. There are many children, there are many people who are dying. If God were to act, he would attend to them first before he comes to you. Even at the, at the detriment of your eternal salvation, he did not interrupt your choice. There are people today who woke up this morning, but as we speak, they are in hell now. And yet God is still seated on his throne. So hoping that one day something will just happen is a joke. You have to prophesy to yourself, myself, wake up. One day I will have a global ministry. One day in the name of Jesus I will bless me. Wonderful. Congratulations. Except for the fact that it will only remain a wish in the realm of the spirit. Let me tell you the difference between a wish and a goal. A wish is a desire with no responsibility commitment to it. When you set a goal, it is a strong desire that is backed up with the willingness to commit whatever it takes under God to actualize that goal. Responsibility is the key word. If all you have is just a desire, it will never come to pass. Your desire must be able to sponsor the willingness to pay whatever price under God to see that it comes to pass. Are we together? You call it gaining momentum. So where the, the plane is only warming up. Vision. I am amazed, pastor, at how many Christians, respectfully speaking, live absolutely visionless lives. People just move up and down and blame God for everything. When they can't see God, they blame pastors who they can see for everything and then blame parents, blame every... Now, I understand that sometimes these things can be emotionally overwhelming. But the day you start moving forward is the day you take responsibility over your destiny and say, in the name of Jesus, I'm tired of giving excuses. In the name of Jesus, I'm tired of, of legitimizing the continuity of mediocrity and weakness in my life. I respect and I sympathize with your background. I, I sympathize with the fact that you came from a family that was not very responsible. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I sympathize with you, but wake up from where thou art, lift up your eyes. For as long as you keep looking down, you will soon find your children looking with you. You will soon find your grandchildren joining them to look with you. Many of our parents, respectfully speaking, kept complaining until we now join them in that complaint. You make up your mind in this conference that my children will not find me there. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are 
are few people, historically speaking, who had the leverage to be able to rise to positions of influence and notoriety. Most people had to speak to themselves right from where they were. You ask your pastor, he will tell you that there were times he had to just shut away and say, look, it's time for us to move forward. I remember talking with a man, very great and influential man, and this man told me, Apostle, would you believe that as at the time I married my wife, I had to give her one of my big shirts when she was pregnant. That means you remove your shirt and say, wife, there's no buying, uh, you know, those, those gowns. Said, I don't have the money for that. Don't expect anything there, but uh, thank God I'm bigger than you. We can make do with this. The Lord will prosper us in the future. Now, that man would have given a careless excuse and now mentored the child and said, young man, let me tell you how you arrived. Let me tell you the story. And the child in anger and pain will remain there, become a teenager, become an adult, marry his own wife and say, don't, don't, don't blame me for being irresponsible. I'm continuing something. There is a, there is a history to this. There has to be someone who will break that cycle. And it's, it comes with the power of vision. What seest thou? As for me, I see a life of glory. In the name of Jesus, I see an opportunity to wake up every morning transforming a generation, blessing a people. For someone, you are seeing a company that God has been speaking to you. You have refused to write it. You have refused to take it serious. The Holy Ghost works like a woman. If he tries to give you his attention and you ignore it, he will step back until he discerns seriousness from you again. Many of you, the reason why God stops showing you certain things is because he traced that you don't take his speaking serious. Abraham, come out of your father's house. The first assignment is come out. Come out of your father's house. He came from a land of wizardry and witchcraft, or of the Chaldeans, and he called that traditionally. He said, come out of your father's house, from your kindred, from everything to a land that I will show you. The transformation started when he changed what he was seeing. May grace to be visionary rest upon your life. Hear me. You may be in that one room now. There's no point faking what can be real. Just be patient with your destiny. You see, the powerful thing about vision is that it has the power of omnipresence. You can be in a room and your vision can be where you will be tomorrow. The, the imagination is powerful. It can go. You can't. Listen. Listen. Your vision works with your imagination and it can, it can go to your future. Make sure it supervises that that future is real. It will come back and take your body there. Are we together? Vision. Let's hurry up. Number two. The second spiritual law that governs advancement in this kingdom law of light the power of spiritual illumination and insight please pay attention in this kingdom we rise by the light that we possess the law of light Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae and he was praying for them and he desired that they might be filled with three dimensions of light. Number one, the knowledge of God's will. Number two, all wisdom. Number three, spiritual understanding. It takes light to rise in this kingdom. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 2. Paul said, I went up by revelation. Galatians 2.2. 2. I went up. It took more than desire. From where I was, I went up, and it was revelation that took me up. I went up by revelation. Light is powerful in this kingdom. Psalms 45 and verse 4. And in your majesty, he says, rise, ride prosperously because of truth. And in your majesty, ride prosperously. Triumph. Move forward. Because of the truth that you know. It 
Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Very, very humbling scripture. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them. There's no exception to it. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no city. The city is there, but the method to get there. Have you climbed a bike with someone who looked so confident? And he said, take me somewhere. And the guy was speeding as if he was going to kill you. And then he said, where did you say you are going again? I, I know it's where. And he said, I thought you said you know the place. He said, well, um, mention the name again. I think I'm... I'm and he said, so wh where were you going with this kind of speed? Lights. Listen. Every dimension of result in the kingdom has a light and illumination component that connects to it. If it's finances, there is a dimension of spiritual truth that connects to it. If it is speed, if it is restoration, if it is influence, all of these facets of results have a, a, an exact body of spiritual knowledge allocated to them. Are we together now? Can I tell you this? Our knowledge of God is, our pursuit and the knowledge of God is infinite. Even in heaven, we'll continue to be learning God. But the keys that make for a successful life are finite. You can hold them. They are not infinite. You can actually hold the keys that make for a successful life. They are many, but they are finite. Are we together? Like a student, learning never stops, but... When you went to school, there was an exact curriculum allocated for the degree you went to get, isn't it? When you exhausted it, they gave it to you. So, you can beat your chest and say, I am a doctor or I am a this and that. It doesn't mean your learning has stopped, but you have exhausted that curriculum. There is an exact body of knowledge that is responsible for specific spiritual outcomes. You want to rise financially, there is an exact body of knowledge allocated. You want favor upon your life, there is an exact body of knowledge. Isn't it amazing that many times we desire outcomes without the knowledge that connects us to them? For instance, if it is favor you want to see in your life, why am I not seeing favor? I know the Bible says I should be favored, but why is it not working? Because you do not understand the dynamics that make for favor. Light. So, Apostle, what are the laws that govern favor, for instance? Just as if I desire favor, just wishing and hoping that favor will come, I, I would frustrate myself. I have to learn the principles that control favor in this kingdom. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Are you seeing now? Favor is a product of light. Favor works with sight. I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. So emptiness has an explanation. When your hand is empty, it's not, it's, it's not a, 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 a happenstance. There is an exact spiritual law you are violating that leads to emptiness. Are we together? Apostle, why am I not favored? Because for many of us, you think, oh, if God just wants to favor me, he will favor me. And I've respectfully observed in the body of Christ that the definition of favor, you know, many times we say favor is unmerited. I understand what we are trying to say. But the truth is that it is the dimension of favor that works as unmerited access with respect to salvation that is unmerited. Favor is very merited. I'm just using favor as a case study to explain light. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. This is the law that controls favor. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. Read with me, please. One to read. <laughs> So the Bible gives us the similitude of two pregnant women, two pregnant women. The first woman is called good understanding and that she has a child in her womb. When she gives birth, the name of that child is favor. 
There is also another woman called transgression. She gives birth. The name of her child is hardship. So when you see the child, no child falls from the sky. There is a mother that gives birth to that child. Theoretically speaking, the womb of a woman should be able to give birth indefinitely, isn't it? That means you can program favor again and again. I've told you if it happens only once, it's breakthrough, not favor. The proof that it is favor is consistency regardless the circumstances. So many people have not really experienced favor. So hoping that it will happen, you will just testify once in four years, once in five years. What happened to you is not favor. What happens to you is the law of time and chance because it happens to everybody. You can choose and program favor over your life and it happens every time. You will get to a point where if in a day you are not favored, you will go on a retreat because you know something is wrong. Are you blessed? Yes. Good understanding is what gives favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. Favor works with the power of sight. Let me tell you this. If the grace for favor is really on you, believe me when I say this, the only person who cannot bless you is a blind person. Favor works with sight. That's how it works. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. Let's hurry up. Is God helping us? Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. The B part, please. And Esther obtained favor where? In the sight of how many? All them that looked upon her. So if the favor of God is on you, if I can look at you, that grace will compel me to attend to you. It's true. It's true. This is scripture. Not even the king could withstand it. Verse 17. Give us the same scripture. Esther 2 and verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor where? In his sight. I've told you favor works with sight. When favor is on you, Activate the principles is 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 a charm like compelling force that people just look at you and they are compelled to want to bless you. Can I tell you the truth? Everybody is a giver. It's just that what is on you is not sufficient to compel the resources because an uncle who vowed that he will never help you will carry the same seed and kneel down before a man of God and say, give me an honor of taking this. Whereas it was one-fifth what he's giving that you were asking for. Everybody is a giver. It's just that you program your possibilities by yourself. The power of light. Go and get pastor's tapes. Get the CDs. Don't say I was there when they preached it. Is this kind of carelessness that makes us to be around miracles and never experience it? I listen to my own teachings as if I did. I was not the one who preached it. I don't listen to it with the arrogance of, oh, I know this. No. When Joshua Selman is blessing, I go down on my knees and I receive it too. Believe what I'm saying. This is why most people who are members in a church, usually they are the ones who don't receive. So people just come because the people come with hunger and passion. They buy all the tapes. They say it's an honor. You mean I'm meeting Pastor Kingsley? Please, I have discerned that there is a grace for favor. Let it come upon my life. Yet you are the one holding the water like the wine presser, the butler, and yet it never blesses you. Are we together? Light, discernment. Make up your mind that you will be a student of knowledge. Knowledge first before clothes. Knowledge first before luxury. Invest in knowledge. What you have, you have. The law of light. Let's hurry up number three. Wherever we stop, we'll just pray for tonight. The third spiritual law that governs advancement in this kingdom is called the law of transformation. The power of a transformed mind. You want to make progress. You want to move forward. You have to sustain a superior belief system.
that is higher and greater than the context of culture, the context of your background, this is where many well-meaning believers, we refuse to transit mentally. We, we, we are loyal to belief systems that are destructive, satanic. Do you know your mindset is the gateway that both the Holy Spirit and demons flow through to access your life? Are we together? Transformation is very, very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. There are many believers who have refused to be transformed. And because of their refusal for transformation, they find out that they are unable to walk in the fullness of of that which God desires. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, please. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, look up please, so is he, not so he will be. You are already it. Your thought life, your mindset, your perspectives. Write this down please. Let's talk a bit about mindsets. If this is where I stop tonight, it is too important to be brushed. Write this down. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. It is a viewpoint. It is a perspective. Your mindset talks about your ideologies, your value systems, your thinking pattern. Let me define what a stronghold is. A stronghold is a mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits so that the victim is kept perpetually in that line of thought. It is that spiritual condition that makes the word of God of none effect. That means what the devil does when he wants to destroy you is to bring informations that are based on lies, informations that are not consistent with the character of God. They may be sociologically right. They may be thoughts that you are familiar with. When he finds out that those thoughts are crystallized in your mind, demon spirits come to build a wall around that mindset to ensure that there is no other way you think because your thinking is what keeps the door open for their operation. If you're, the Bible says, this sign shall follow them that believe. That means what follows you is a report card of what you believe. You don't drive what follows you. You change what you believe and what follows you changes too. You see that now? These signs shall follow them that believe. So what is following me is following me because of what I believe. Failure, retrogression. You have a relationship in two weeks. All your friends just hate you and leave you. Everybody, you've given excuses that everybody hates you. The signs are following you. You don't say, go, I don't like you. That's not how you drive them. You change their, they are coming in honor. Something in your mind is attracting them. When you become disloyal to those faulty belief systems, the signs also change. Are we together? Mindsets are formed through cultural influences. Now, there are positive aspects of culture, but there are very wrong, demonic, and destructive aspects of culture. Family backgrounds, past experiences, failures and limitations, levels of exposure, associations. All these are factors that frame our mindsets. And when God wants to do business with you in this kingdom, you will have to contend for a transformed mind. There are many people who God cannot use them today because something is wrong with their thinking. Their thinking does not give that allowance. Mindset. How does the process of transformation occur? We're praying. Number one, the first process that leads to transformation is awareness, a recognition. Even if you don't know the answer, the fact that you know you are in a situation that needs help is already the process of transformation. Transformation starts with recognition and awareness. 
even if it's an awareness of your ignorance, it is a miracle in itself. A child does not know he's a child. I hope you know that. It's an adult that knows that what the child is doing is called childishness. A fool does not know he is foolish. It's only a wise person that there has to be a reference. So when God wants to show you mercy, he will find a way of contrasting your mindset with a superior belief. Now you look from that lens and see that, ah, I'm doing something wrong. Otherwise, you will flatter yourself in your mid because in your world, you are still king, no matter how depraved that world is. You will know how faulty your kingdom is when another king comes to. In ancient times, there were times when other kings would come. Both the king and his kingdom, they sweep them. That's how mindsets are. You can live in a small world and because you are king in that small world, you can still believe that it's a kingdom worthy of living in. Until God expands your mind by showing you the possibilities that can be, then you will come back and start deconstructing those mindsets. Mindsets are powerful, very powerful. Genesis 11, let me show you something as we pray. Please give us Genesis 11, we'll read the first four verses, maybe four or five. The Bible says, and the whole earth were of one language and of one speech, verse two. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of China and they dwelt there. Verse 3, the Bible says, And they said to one another, Goto, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they made bricks for stone and slime they made for mortar. Notice, notice that Nimrod was just proposing something. They had not started the building. He was doing something to their minds. Gentlemen, I'm putting you as a team we are on a project. Whether it was a spiritual building or physical, we know that creation happened. There was a building and he started by walking on their minds. Verse 4, the Bible says, he said to them, let us build a city whose tower and whose top may reach the heavens and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad on the face of the earth. Verse 5, now this is a very fearful scripture. Read it with me. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Stop. That means while they were talking in the realm of the spirit, a building was rising. And God said, who is building? He didn't come. And, they had not started. But God said he came to see the building that was finished already. The moment their mind started building it in the realm of the spirit, there was a structure that was rising that called the attention of God. Everything is built twice. Anything that is not built twice cannot be truly built. You build your company twice. You build your destiny twice. And the first building is the authentic one. Because even if the other one is destroyed, that one will force a physical equivalence of it to come. Believe what I'm teaching you. It's true. So you can be right where you are. And the Holy Spirit takes your mind to a place where the great are seated and says this is your space in destiny while that is happening in heaven they are already seeing you move whereas you think you are in one small room do you know the realm of the spirit can discern progress please hear what I'm telling you this is how some of us came to this thing by the grace of God right from where you are your body may be limited by transport fare but your mind has an ability, your mind has omnipresence. It can enter your future and find out that that thing God said is true. It will return back. Only your mindset can hold your hand to where you need to be. I remember days when I would have the vision, seeing myself around the world preaching the gospel standing and talking and ministering to kings and nobles from that background is a joke based on my background but i found out that this mind is a miracle is a miracle that will take ages for men to know what god gave them dream with god right from that room dream with god and there is no power in existence men can bully your body not your mindset The law, this 
This is one of the most powerful spiritual laws I learned in my life. It is, the, uh, it is this law that keep, puts everybody at the same level in life. Everybody has the same opportunity. You may not believe what I'm telling you, but it's true. From the lens of a transformed mind, the justice system of God ensures that if you use your mind, there is no limitation that will be sustained in your life. Go back home. Write down the business idea. Write down the vision for 2021. Write a scripture, connect to it, and dream with the Spirit of God. Let Him show you. While that is happening, your current mindset will say you are mad. Is right. That's why you are living it. Your current mindset will say, no, no, it has... You can wave it goodbye and say, I wave this level of life goodbye and it will wave you back forever. Hallelujah. The only limit in my life is the voice of God and process. These are the only limits I have in my life. The voice of God and process. These are the only limits. I have chosen that these are the only things that limit me in life. The voice of God and process. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Our time is up. Can you spare me five more minutes? Thank you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.